So uh, thank you for your perspective. So before starting the banking, can you just take me uh, give your perception of how electric vehicles look and uh, what are the different Now, how electric vehicles look and So uh, this is the traction battery, the one which uh, we are going to discuss about it. Rest of the components except these are the motor, the power electronic converter, the DC converter, the power semiconductor, the digital slow down, the auxiliary battery. This is not the high voltage battery, but the 12 volt battery that we have. Then we have uh, some good charger, transmission, and the charger. So this is how basically an electric laser is built. And uh, today we are going to uh, see all this question. So if I show you the line diagram, then this is how the basic architecture of the vehicle is like. So the batteries are connected to the So basically, what is the use of the battery in uh, the electric system? What is the purpose of it? So basically, as you can see over here, uh, battery, what it does is basically for a chemical reaction to convert them. It converts the chemical energy into electrical energy. And what it does is it gives this energy to the motor. What does electric motor do then? It receives the energy from uh, the electric motor and it converts it into electrical energy. Right. And this is part of the energy. Now, in Lanyard, we that. So we require a conversion mechanism. We convert DC into DC. So how that is done? It is done through convert. Okay. And uh, basically there are two ways of charging the battery. One is through the slow charging, that is basic charging. So these are the small charges that uh, we see uh, with the car. Right. Uh, basically, uh, we see that along with the car. And then we have a DC fast charge. What is fast charging? The uh, big device that you see. And you know, uh, Before we jump into that, first, uh, let us try to justify, as many of you uh, said some disadvantages. Uh, actually, whether the battery is justified to be a power system. Right? Because we have got so many power systems. Can I justify battery as the power system? Can I justify battery as uh, the future? So, let us do it. So, basically, what we will try to do is uh, we will capture different parameters and we will try to see. How the battery fares in each of the terms. So we'll come to about this advantage and disadvantage. And then we'll conclude that the battery electric vehicle is actually justified. Okay. So we'll start with the first parameter that is energy state. So as you all said, regarding the function of the battery, there is energy. So there are two types of batteries available in the market: the primary battery and the secondary battery. What is primary battery? Primary battery is the one which does not get recharged. It does not get recharged. All the battery cells that you see in your block, you see in your electric or what? Yes. So once the charge is completed, you have to And then it is the second data. What is the second data? The one which is continuously recharged. And because of that property, we are using uh, the, uh, the secondary battery into the data because it gets uh, recharged over and over. Even though it continues less for the compared to current, still we are doing that for the future. Right? Because it gets when I talk about specific energy, uh, then this is a point where the battery fails this as compared to your traditional Yeah. Uh, so when I talk about specific energy, this is where the battery cell is low as compared to the If I want to quantify it, 
I would say that I have given lots of questions in the round, so I found the answer. And uh, the traditional system has been around 300 years old. So this is definitely that the specific energy is especially higher than the energy. So it's come up in the middle of the energy. When I talk about responses, then here are the methods of the energy. Uh, so many times you would see that you would have, you know, when you uh, go in the morning, Right here on, we need to, uh, we need to. So, we need to, 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 we need
Application of batteries in various fields. Okay. So, some the uh, categories if we want to divide, then So yes, I can uh, classify this uh, battery sector into three major categories. The first is the consumer electronics, which you are all aware of, your mobile, tablets, and everything. Second is uh, the growing market of transportation, right? It ranges from auto bicycles to uh, cars. And then you have a growing market of grid energy. So this is basically a new market for your cell tower applications and everything. So. Uh, this consumer electronic market is basically getting saturated, whereas uh, the evolving markets are transportation and grid energy. Okay. So now let us try to see of how EV battery actually looks like and uh, what are some of its uh, characteristics. <coughs> so this is how your EV battery looks like. So if I open the pack, like if I open the top cover, this is what I'll be able to see. So all these things, what you are able to see, these are different modules. Module 1, Module 2, Module 3, like that. So depending upon the requirements, we have different modules. And what does this module consist of? So if I open this top cover of uh, this particular module, I will be able to see different cells inside it. And cells basically are of three types. Uh, we call it as form factor in our technical terms. So it is a prismatic, cylindrical and a pouch cell. So if you uh, closely see, you will see that irrespective of what the form factor is, the basic construction still remains the same, right? We have a positive electrode, negative electrode, separator and case in every one of these. It's just, it just depends on your application which you want to select. Okay. So most of the time in the EVs, we use prismatic cells. And uh, sometimes like uh, when you go and uh, do, uh, you know, 
uh, purchase a vehicle, they will say that uh, our battery pack is of this many voltage, this much of power. So how do you basically calculate it? So imagine that uh, our battery or a car's battery has a five volts, right? Each module has ten cells in it. So my total uh, cells will be five to ten. That is fifty. Generally, nominal voltage is around three point six five for lithium ion. So I, if I multiply it, I will come to about one eighty two point five volts. Right. And if at all I multiply this with my current uh, ampere as, I will get my power. So this is how uh, we calculate the power and the voltage of a particular battery. So uh, you know there are different batteries which are available in the market. But for the EV application specifically, we have categorized uh, some sort of batteries which are actually recommended for EVs. So which are those batteries? First is lead acid batteries. Every one of you know lead acid batteries. Well, uh, you are using it in your conventional vehicles as well. Then lithium ion batteries, something which is uh, used to a very great extent, right? Uh, then we have a nickel hydride battery and nickel cadmium battery. So which is that we are using to the maximum extent in the EVs? Lithium ion batteries, right? Lithium ion batteries. So lithium ion batteries are definitely the future, and they are going to be, uh, you know, at some point of time, be replaced by. They will be replacing the lead acid batteries completely, right? Again, lithium ion batteries are classified into different chemistries, and as a as an engineer, it's very important for us to understand which are these chemistries and why do we select those chemistries. Okay, so first is LFP, that is the lithium ion phosphate. Then it is LTO, that is lithium titanate. Then we have a lithium manganese oxide LMO. We have a lithium nickel manganese cobalt NMC, and then we have NCA that is lithium nickel cobalt aluminium. So these are basically the types of chemistries inside the lithium ion batteries. Okay. So uh, you all know that lithium ion batteries are being used in today's vehicle. So what are the reasons that lithium ion batteries are used? Let's have a look at it. So first, lithium is the lightest of all metal. So what makes lithium the lightest of all metal? Can, can anyone answer this? Why is lithium the lightest of all? Go back to your chemistry days where you studied. High, 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 high. High. Yes, high, what is the yeah, atomic number yeah. of lithium? <laughs> So the lower the atomic number, you would have seen that Mendeleev periodic table. Right. So three is the atomic number of lithium, which makes it the lightest metal. Then uh, it has the greatest electrochemical potential. What is electrochemical potential? Back to your chemistry days, guys. Electrochemical potential. More? Can I donate the electron? Excellent. Yes. So basically, electrochemical potential is the uh, tendency of the material to react. Okay. So the lesser the amount of electrons in the outermost orbit, the more reactive the element will become. Right. So how many electrons does lithium have in the outermost orbit? So it becomes very easy for exchange of the electrons. So that is uh, that is what makes lithium uh, very uh, you know what you can say reactive material. Okay. So like, uh, next is the largest. Energy density for it. Energy density is nothing but the amount of energy you can pack in a unit of substance. Right. So if I'm having two, uh, say two lids, if I'm able to pack more energy in lid A than lid B, then I can say that lid A is having more energy density. And this is what uh, lithium has. This is the uh, great property of lithium because of which we are utilizing it as a battery. And uh, then it has the low level of toxic metals. Right? Lead acid battery. Why we are comparing it with lead acid batteries? Because lead acid batteries are being already in use. Okay, and if you would be here, uh, if you would know about Fame 2 policy of the government, even they are focusing more on gradually deviating from this uh, lead acid battery to lithium ion battery. What is the reason? Because of the next toxicity. Okay, so these are the reasons that uh, why they are using the lithium ion. And uh, just to justify, you know, lithium is standing over here. In that medium, so atomic number of three. So all the metals on the upper side are light metals, right? And all the metals on the downside are heavy metals. If you go to the left of the periodic table, it is metallic elements. If you go right, non-metallic elements. So uh, lithium, the lightest of all metal and the most reactive. Okay. 
so uh, now we have seen that lithium first of all batteries are justified to be the energy source lithium ions lithium batteries are mostly used why lithium ions are used we have also seen now out of the different chemistries of lithium ion which chemistry should i select let us have a look at it okay and uh, for uh, not going into much of uh, the technicalities i'll just present you in the form of graph uh, which will make you an easy to understand okay so here you can get a clear cut uh, comparison of different chemistries of lithium ions right uh, so basically if you see at my part will be low and then at the end you will tell me that if you want to design your electric vehicle which chemistry will you select okay so uh, starting from lco as you can see lco lithium cobalt oxide uh yes uh, abbreviations are written over here so uh, lco that is lithium cobalt oxide if i see if i talk about lco it is giving me a high specific energy right uh, specific power is quite low but there is an inverse relation between the uh, specific energy and specific power However, there are certain chemistries which does the optimum balance of both of them. Okay. Safety point of view, not that good. Performance, optimum. Lifespan, not that good. And cost wise, it's again not good. So higher the uh, area covered, lesser will be the cost. Okay. So you consider it that way. So this is about the LCO. So not that much good on safety. And lifespan is also moderate. So not much uh, in use. LMO, what is LMO? Yes. If I talk about LMO, specific energy is less as compared to LCO. Specific power is optimum. Safety wise, it's moderate, it's good. Performance is not, not that good. Lifespan is okay, uh, not that good as LCO. So again, a reason why we can uh, reject this uh, chemistry as well. NCA. Uh, what about NCA? A very high specific energy. Specific power is also good. But as far as safety is concerned, it's not that good, right? And one of the critical aspects, uh, there was a person who said burning. I said, okay, <laughs> we'll come to your point. Okay, uh, and then uh, lifespan moderate, performance again moderate. Here. So when we talk about NMC, here you can see uh, the characteristics are evenly distributed. Very good on specific energy. Power is also optimum. Uh, cost. Is higher than some of the traditional counterparts, but still under the range. Lifespan good, performance or good, and safety point. It's better than the other things that you have seen over here, as, uh, specifically as compared to NCI, the previous chemistry. Right. When I talk about NFP, very high on safety. Okay. Even though its specific energy is less, it's very high on safety. Specific power is very good. Cost, even though it appears same as NMC over here, but LFP's cost is less than NMC. Okay, lifespan again huge, and performance is a bit less than NMC. Okay, and then LTO, uh, huge cost. What is LTO basically? Lithium titanium. You know uh, what the world is so cost of titanium, so it will be very costly. Specific energy is also not that good, even though it is good in other parameters like lifespan, performance, and safety. But basically, it should be in our budget, right? It is already very expensive. So now tell me, if you were to design your EVs, which chemistry would you prefer, and why? So these are the possible options you have. Now tell me, and you, you can compromise somewhere. Exactly, you have to compromise somewhere. So maybe you would be getting your answer. <laughs> okay. Okay, so which chemistry will you select? So I am giving you a car to design, NMC. Any other? NMC, everyone NMC. So I think, sir, you would be selecting LFP because it's higher safety. It's your safety, LFP. So LFP. Okay, so LFP is higher on safety. So right. So NMC, of course, and LFP. These are the two chemistries uh, that are widely used, and that is exactly what we have done for our energy as well. Okay, so all the cars that you are seeing now is being run on LFP. So we are safe. <laughs> okay, but the cars that you are seeing uh, that was on NMC that is also safe, very safe, but not that much safe as compared to LFP. Why? Because 
we have got other advantages of NMC, very high specific energy, which unfortunately we don't get for LFP. So it's basically all the trade-off that you have to do, right? What you want to select as an OEM, right? So these are the possible chemistries. These are the possible uh, variations that you get. And as an engineer, as an OEM, it depends on us which trade-off do we select. Should we give more importance to the range? Should we give more importance to safety? How will it? So here, as you can see in this graph, uh, the NC and LCO, even though it's a high specific energy, we are not much using it. Why? Right? Because of the other aspects that you can see. Okay. So uh, this was the comparison about uh, you know the different chemistries. So uh, now we have justified battery to be the power source. We know why lithium ions. We know which chemistry to be used. Now let us see the basic function of lithium ion batteries. Okay. So every one of you would have, would have seen this diagram, electrolysis. Our expert is over here, so <laughs> sir would have already described about that. Uh, so basically, lithium ion batteries work on a simple pro principle of electrolysis. Right. So consider it as a cell. Okay, what is the cell consisting of? A positive cathode, electro positive electrode cathode, a negative electrode anode, a electrolyte, and a separator which separates the two. Okay. Cathode generally uh, we coat it with the base metal that is the lithium ion metals. Okay. Anode we select that material which can uh, attract more of the ions towards itself. So generally we use graphite. So you would all be aware of the graphite structure. Yeah? How is the graphite structure? It uh, resembles more of an out structure where it can, you know. Uh, <laughs> attract more electrons, can pack more electrons or ions inside it. Okay. And then we have a separator. The material that we select for separator should be something which is permeable. It's like a porous material. Okay. And uh, then we have electrolyte. So uh, in order to understand this, let us divide it into two parts. First is uh, the functioning during the charging and then during the discharge. So what happens when uh, my battery is getting charged? That is my vehicle. I'm putting my vehicle to charge. What happens during that time? So during that time, uh, the lithium ion, which are uh, which forms cathode, will disintegrate into your lithium ions and electrons when the moment you apply the charge. Right. So the lithium loses the electrons. So what happens? It gets converted into positive ions. Right. So these positive ions move towards the anode through the separator. However, the electrons are not allowed to move through this and they form the upper circuit. Right. While forming the upper circuit, they generate electricity and power on okay, the power on the vehicle. And uh, when the lithium ion reaches here in the anode, an electron for fulfilling its function, it also reaches the anode. Here again, your ions and electrons will combine to form an anode. So this is the first cycle of its completion. Every like continuous charging, continuously this process keeps on happening. Okay. And uh, while discharging, what happens? So uh, when I'm disconnecting the charger and I'm driving it, what I'm actually doing is I'm connecting a load. Right? I'm connecting a load to that particular cell. So during that time, the reverse function will happen. The atoms will disintegrate again into ions and electrons, and will flow back to its original position, that is cathode, and electron will form the upper part. Okay, it generates electricity. And uh, it will form the upper part. And uh, again, it will assemble here in the cathode. And this is uh, where uh, the one discharging cycle gets completed. Right. So the combination of one charging and this one discharging cycle will be your one cycle of lithium ion. So many times you will be seeing that your uh, lithium ion manufacturers are giving you warranty in terms of the cycles. Right. So that is this cycle. Okay. So. Uh, nowadays, generally, uh, we have a cycle life of around, say, 3,500 3, uh, cycles. However, uh, uh, we are doing some research in order to increase the cycle up to 10,000. So that is still going on. Okay, so this is basically how the functioning of the lithium ion batteries are. Okay, so now uh, we know, we have seen how basic TV looks like, what is the function of the batteries. We know why lithium ion. We have seen different chemistries, we have seen the working. So, uh, just in order to give a better visualization, I'd like to show you one video wherein uh, you will see about the basics of uh, electrolysis, how it happens, 
the basics of the car. There is also a concept called cell balancing and the SCI layer that we'll be seeing in this video. Okay, so that is this is this video, a beautiful video. Maybe you can see this. It will give some insight to it. A portable power supply in myon cells and their future. If you would like to learn more about the lithium ion cells used in multiple so, so this video gave you some insight. Mm -hmm. so this is a good channel you can follow this channel as well. Uh, so <clears throat> Now let us have a look at the cost breakup of the battery cell. Mm. So uh, as I already told you that batteries already contribute to almost half the cost of EVs, right? And that is what makes it very critical. That is what makes it something for our engineers to have a look at it. Right. So optimizing the batteries definitely means that we are optimizing <laughs> the batteries. Right? So uh, after the total battery pack, if I consider a cell, 51% of the cost goes only through the cathode. Right? And that is the reason why there are so many experiments which are going on to select the material for cathode. Right? So we can, uh, as you have already seen, like, uh, you know, different chemistries are there. We, are, uh, we can try different permutation and combination and come to the best products. Again, when it comes to manufacturing and depreciation, the, that cost is 24%. And it contributes only to 12%. Because we know graphite, the content, uh, the content of graphite. Uh, separator is seven percent, electrolyte is four percent, and uh, housing and other materials, basically the mechanical things, is three percent. So this is the total cost of your cell. Okay. So this is where you can, uh, you know, you as an engineer can see the prospectus of where to reduce the rates, and you can see the prospectus of how going further, which are the potential paths where uh, you can reduce the rates and Ultimately, this is going to affect on the final cost of the EVs. Okay. So, certain advantages and limitations of the lithium ion batteries. First is uh, high energy density. We have already studied right in the previous slides that it is having a very high energy density. And the good thing is that the potential of still higher uh, densities are yet to be explored. So, we cannot say that we have got the maximum of. Uh, this lithium ion batteries, we can still explore the potential of these batteries. So it is second is it is having a relatively low self discharge. That is as compared to other batteries. So uh, say you are parking a vehicle, you are not using it for a long time. So generally batteries will tend to you know, deteriorate in the charge. But lithium ion batteries has a very uh, low deterioration rate. Like the SOC depletion are very low. It is low on maintenance. And it can provide a very high current. That is the EH value that you get in the ampere hours value yeah. that you get is very high. There are certain limitations as well uh, that it requires a protection circuit to maintain the voltage and current within the same levels. So the moment you open the lithium ion batteries, you will be able to see the safety circuits, right? The contact test fuses and other things. And that is why it is required for your safety things. Uh, when we talk about aging, then over time, even if it is not in use. So if I'm storing my batteries at a location and if I'm not utilizing it, the, there is a parameter we, uh, we call it as SOH, that is a state of health, that may deplete. But however, this can be, uh, you know, reduced if I'm storing it at around the 40 percentage of the charge. Means if my battery is 100 percent charged, I reduce it 40 percent and then store it. So this will uh, reduce my aging to a uh, drastic energy. Uh, again, it's, it's expensive to manufacture, but as and when something gets commercialized, the rates will automatically come down. So as of now, yes, it is expensive and that is the reason why EVs are expensive. But over a period of time, as uh, we start localizing, we start, uh, you know, uh, producing in India, the price are going to come substantially down. And uh, next is, uh, it is not fully matured, as I already said. So you can consider this as an advantage and disadvantage both. Because uh, still we are exploring the possibilities. We cannot say this is completely mature. We are still exploring the possibilities of higher densities. Right. So uh, these are some of the advantages and limitations of uh, you know lithium ion batteries. If I uh, talk about the EV manufacturers, then uh, EV battery manufacturers and the top ten EV battery manufacturers across the globe. Cattle, the top manufacturer. Uh, so we have a type with this uh, company. Uh, so if you see over here, 
the first three companies, Cattel, LG, and Panasonic. Seventy percent of the market shares are being owned by these companies. Again, a great potential for the young entrepreneurs to look at this particular thing. Right. Seventy percent is being controlled by the three companies. Almost uh, more than uh, seventy percentage of uh, the sales, eighty percentage of the sales are manufactured in China. More than fifty to sixty percentage companies belong to China. And uh, this is what uh, you know you'll be able to see uh, the cattle, which is the top manufacturer, provides to almost all the uh, big brands: Tesla, Peugeot, Hyundai, Honda, BMW, Toyota, Volkswagen, and Volvo. Mm -hmm. LG also does provide to Jaguar, Audi, Porsche, and Ford, but there were some issues regarding LG cab that you had already known, you know, you have been seen in uh, papers about money issues. And uh, then Panasonic is the third. So these are basically the top three contributors. The reason why I'm sh showing you this slide is because this give this will give you some insight, right, of what you as an engineer can explore. And if someone wants to be, you know, uh, researching in this field, you can. There are uh, major players who are contributing. You can you cannot see even a single player from India. Okay. So uh, this is uh, this is the present scenario. So with this words, I think I would uh, like to end my session thinking that we will all help the country to contribute to a more greener environment. Okay. So that was it for today. Thank you. So do we have time for some questions? Yes, a few questions quickly. So we can just recap the sessions if there are no questions. Whatever. Uh, my one of the questions is what is the role of operating temperature? So basically, yes, a uh, very important question. What is the role of operating temperature? So what happens is basically, uh, as per the different chemistries, uh, the different chemistries have different operating temperatures. Like if I compare NMC, and LFP. And the thermal every uh, like cell has a particular range after which the thermal runaway starts. Okay. So if I compare NMC, the thermal runaway starts at the earlier temperature as compared to LFP. So based on this thermal uh, th runaway, we are categorizing that safety aspects which you have seen. That I'm I'm telling that uh, my LFP is more stable as compared to my NMC. And CA is less stable. So on basis of that parameters, on basis of when the exothermic reactions will take place, I'm categorizing it as safety. So every uh, every uh, particular chemistry has a particular temperature after which that exothermic start up. Right. So um, the contribution of the temperature today is very high. That is the reason we have the cooling technology. Right? So uh, in two wheelers still we don't have liquid to cooling technologies, but all the cars we have liquid to cooling technologies wherein the temperature increases to a certain extent, my cooling will start. It will again reduce the temperature. So, it does. It does affect. So I uh, will give you a practical example. If you uh, run a car in say around 50 degrees in Jaisalmer, and if you run a car in around 24 degrees, definitely there will be some impact. Mm -hmm. So I think the first question I already answered, like uh, you know, uh, when I talk about environment friendly. I see. Uh, when people have that argument that uh, most of the electricity is generated through coal, right? And that is why it is ultimately polluting. But if you see uh, the result of burning coal and the result of burning the petrol, right? The uh, emissions that it emits is very less uh, uh, when it, uh, when, this, uh, when, when we are burning a high value of calorific coal. Plus, the most important thing is, as of today, uh, there has been the plan of government that of almost 50% of the energy in the future will be coming from a non-conventional sources. So we are gradually migrating from conventional, that is a thermal coal, to the non-conventional uh, resources. So if you see a uh, scenario, most of the energies which will be coming to us will be through the non-conventional sources. 
So at that time, we, we, we can say that, okay, PV is now completely eco-friendly. But even as of today, uh, we are reducing the urban pollution as well as uh, the total pollution rate of the whole country. Shifting the pollution from the urban to uh, the it is not right. so the power plant is located basically. So okay. again, like uh, I, I'll just give an example. If I burn one kg of coal, if I burn one kg of petrol, and if I see the emissions, yeah, but we can say that the calorific value of the both are the different one. Exactly, calorific value are different. But if you uh, see, for example, so what we have to how much pollution has generated exactly our complete exactly. of the energy density of life? Right? Yes, yes, yes. So even in that case, if you see, like uh, as I said, like and there has been experiments, there there has been paper, the research paper, like for example, how much coal uh, is used in uh, say uh, charging of uh, full batteries, like mm -hmm. and how much as compared to how much petrol is used. Even if you compare that, and if you see the pollutant mm -hmm. levels, it is much less. So there is a research which proves that. Even as of today, EV is uh, comparatively less polluted, much less polluted. So we are not shifting the pollution. Actually, if we talk about the global uh, perspective, it's actually reducing. And if I, uh, there have been researches which have been carried out in the European countries where after transferring to electric vehicle, what was the result on the environment? Which was drastically less. Second aspect is the, the how to dispose the battery. Yes. That is the biggest concern. Right. So that is the very reason why we are now migrating from uh, the lead acid batteries to lithium ion batteries. Because as you said that there is a huge problem discarding the lead acid batteries. And unfortunately, this batteries is more used in your conventional cars than in the right? So uh, the big challenge is uh, to discard those batteries as compared to lithium ion batteries. And that is the reason the government is focusing. So if you uh, refer the fame to fame two is not applicable to the batteries uh, to the manufacturers who are using the lead acid batteries. Right? Because ultimately, if you see the whole eco cycle, it is diminished. So, and even the researches are still going on, wherein uh, we are able to recycle most of the materials of the Because country like India, the industrial is the most they produce via the thermal thermal, almost more than 70%. Because I think around 20% we are generating from the renewable energy sources. Then they are supposed to be compared with the other. Well, the renewable sources very huge. Okay, so at uh, condition we can say that yes, right. sir, definitely benefit. So I said that in that condition, definitely it is more beneficial. Even if you consider the present scenario, I am not saying that it will be uh, it's one be, it will be completely eco friendly. But when I compare it with the conventional counterparts, it's more eco friendly. That's what I mean. So I already told that it's a zero tailpipe emission. It's a zero tailpipe tail emission. emission. Yes, that's so what I mean. As of today. As of today. Yeah. As of today. But we do have plans. Mm -hmm. So if you would uh, refer the Nitin Gadkari's, uh, you know, this part of the how he wants to uh, generate electricity in different passes and everything. So he has a plan from decade to decade. So in the future, we can say that, yes, this is possible. But now, there is a direct condition. That I Second question is the cost per kilometer. Huh. Definitely, that is one in rupees per kilometer. But suppose we check, suppose I need the market and want to buy the car, and suppose I have an option like petrol, diesel, and EV. Okay? So the cost of EV is almost double, or we can say that the 1.8 times than the, uh, the same petrol and the power demand. Okay? So uh, the car providing the eight years warranty, and uh, suppose for 1.6 lakh kilometer warranty. Okay? Exactly. So after the eight years, suppose I am going to change the battery, the cost of you already know that the cost of battery is very high. Okay. okay. So break even point, suppose I, I don't think so it comes before 10 years or before 12 years. Okay. So I like to clear two things over here. So very good question actually, very technical question. So first of all, uh, as far as the battery cost is concerned, uh, if you see the cost of battery which it was in 2010, and what it was in 2020. I think it is something like the, the uh, when it becomes the mass market, exactly. then and then the price comes down. Exactly. It is something like that before fuel, the price of this smartphone is very high. Okay, and the features are very high. Right now, the same price we are getting the, uh, the smartphone having the number of features and the larger screen and all these things. Okay, so, so I think it's a transition phase right now. So exactly, that's what I'm saying. If you see the prices of the battery, it has been going substantially down. 
and it is going substantially down even after importing the batteries from the other countries now just imagine a scenario where we are uh, we are completely manufacturing each and every cells in india we uh, there is a huge scope in which we can uh, you know uh, at least we can bring down the cost to almost 50% to 60%. This is the potential that we are having. If we are able, to, if the battery gets commercialized, we definitely it will happen because uh, the EV on the broad. So if you see the condition after a decade, then definitely the cost of the battery is definitely drastically going to come down. So you have to answer your question after eight years, you won't have to pay the same. Another question is after eight years, your battery is not getting depleted completely. It is the warranty which provides. In generally, you also get an engine warranty of say two years, five years. After that, your engine doesn't get useless, right? Similarly, your batteries are not going to get useless after eight years. It's only the company which provides you warranty on it. So, so, so and one, one other thing I would like to add over here. Uh, suppose after eight years, one of your cell gets depleted, right? There are technologies in which you don't need to replace the whole power pack. Okay. Just replace a cell. Okay. But a particular cell, particular model. So, your pack is very So, we have to change the whole traction battery pack to inspire more. So, we also do have that option. So, you can do that. One more question. Suppose the manufacturer provides the live in the charging and discharging cycles. Okay. So, at the performance of battery is going to be Okay. After the uses. How how we can say that uh, suppose range initially range is the we are I am getting the two fifty kilometer mm -hmm. after two years maybe maybe somewhat somewhat less than the two fifty okay so uh, is there any research is going on so uh, there is no degradation in terms of we can say that the range of pixel or see every uh, material is subjected to degradation. Uh, so the research is going on in increasing the energy density. It is the research is going on in increasing the life cycle. As I said, that present life cycle, which generally uh, which is computed, is around three thousand to three thousand five hundred. And uh, there are concepts, there are prototypes which will ensure the, uh, the life cycle up to ten thousand. So that is already on the prototype basis, and it's going to come very soon. I may not be able to share much details in this forum, but yes, the technology exists. Thank you. Huh. Charging time. Charging time. For battery. Huh. So, uh, how we can reduce it? That's what I So, again, we have the technology. Uh, if you uh, do know about solid state batteries, you know, so there, uh, again, we have the prototypes ready in which they are claiming that in, say, in a matter of 10 minutes or something, we are, will be able to charge the full batteries, 10, 15 minutes or something. So, that is again getting uh, continuously evolved. So, the future battery technology will uh, promise us higher energy density. It will promise us low level of toxicity. It will pro uh, uh, promise us the low the charging time also. So these almost many of the prototypes are already ready. It's just when we commercialize it. These batteries were promising. So uh, see, coming from four wheeler industry, I don't think that uh, this concept is much for four wheelers. It is for two wheelers. It is okay, but four wheeler, uh, you know, you require a whole setup. And uh, maybe that setup, say, you know, uh, bringing the car into that, then discarding the battery, again fitting it, checking the safety, will itself consume more than a half an hour to one hour. Better I'll charge that battery during that time. So, as far as four wheeler industry, car industry is concerned, the swappable concept won't be coming that early. That's what I think. Yes, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. They are using They are using it. So basically what you can do is, another thing is you can just take out, see there are uh, various things which uh, needs to consider while swapping the battery. Like right? Generally if I am owner of the car, I am preserving my battery in a particular I would not want other batteries to go. Right? So see it's all about what the consumer want, uh, we companies will follow that. right? So uh, you don't know about the safety parameters, how that person has handled this. So there are various other aspects. So again, uh, yes please. So what is the life of this battery? You are using 3500 cycles, right? So how can we define as a owner? How can I define? Second question is, what is the spare policy and what after this particular cycle, like five years or ten years, what will be the value of my EV? 
uh, one by one that I will answer you. First is uh, your uh, how do how as a customer you will define your life cycle. Yes. Okay. So see, as a customer, uh, you don't need to bother about the life cycle. What you need to bother about is the warranty that you have been getting. Right. So if the company is pro providing you eight years of warranty, any degradation up to certain extent which you will be facing during this eight years, your batteries will be uh, replaced free of cost. So that is the only thing that we are. This is only thing to you know, as an engineer. But as the end customer, what matters to you is just the range, right? If your range, if you're getting this particular range over a period of eight years, your battery is in good. First, as an end customer, that is it. Your second question, please. Scrap policy. Scrap policy. So I think you do already knowing that uh, Nitin Gadkari is already coming up with uh, different uh, policies. Like right? so, after and it is subjected to change. Right? As and when the more EVs will get, uh, you know, into that, the policies will be uh, redefined. So we cannot say that uh, the policies which we will be holding to now, uh, they will be after five years because after five years the complete chemistry will get changed. So there has to be some modifications. And your third question? Why the resale value after that charging is not provided? And what will be the resale value? So as I said, like see, suppose your battery gets depleted, right? Uh, and you want to, uh, so you are saying of the life cycle when you want to uh, sell your vehicle, right? So after your battery gets depleted, as I was saying, there are possibilities that uh, only a particular model needs to be replaced. You don't need to replace the whole battery pack. Okay. Battery pack. Replace the model, bring it into the state, and then, uh, or after the five years, your resale value will depend on what is the cost of the battery at that time. Right. Uh, as of now, I said that the battery uh, cost is substantially coming down. Substantially coming down. The graph is like this. So after five years, my battery's price will be, uh, you know, coming down drastically. What it will be, no one can predict now. It all depends on the user's requirement. How much adaptability of EV the country does it? Right. So based on that, the resale uh, value after five years will be required. But as the company is already giving you eight years of warranty, you don't need to think about what it will happen after five years. Right? Eight to ten years, you are already in the same thing. That's what I'm saying. Right? It all depends on what will be the cost of the battery at that particular time. What will be the degradation? Do you actually need to change the battery after ten years, or you are okay with changing only a particular model? So various factors will be considered after ten years. To that, uh, suppose uh, one person connected to that, uh, I have to travel uh, some place and I have a distance to 200 kilometers. Okay, so when I there, should I uh, charge it during the night or just like it's not like so uh, 400 kilometers total travel is there? See, again, it depends on uh, your driving pattern, basically. So, what we have observed is a lot of a uh, lot of the range actually depends on the driving pattern. Right. Driving pattern and the loads that you connect. If suppose uh, you are going in a humid climate and you are turning on AC, almost 50 to 20 percent will be getting depleted in this way. So if you are uh, turning off your AC and then driving, your usage, your usage pattern, how much time you are braking, how much how speed you are driving, that much matters a lot. But as an end consumer, it's always good to maintain that safe limit. Like if you want, uh, if you want to drive 400 kilometers, it's always better not to uh, uh, you know, wait till see what it is. So you, know, you can have a charging facility, uh, which is we have that 15 amp socket. You can charge it in any uh, such type of plug. Uh, uh, like that, uh, 400 total, oh, total 200 one way. Coming back, total 400. So, I so yes, you can do it. If I charge, roughly it is discharged by half. So, let us see. And I am uh, charging it repeatedly mm -hmm. in that particular cycle. So, number of cycles of charging, there will be any effect. So, generally, uh, if you are charging with slow charger, right, it's always beneficial. And at that time, uh, that particular uh, efficiency will not that degree. So, generally, what we recommend for lithium ion batteries is don't on 80-90%. Play in that limit. That is optimum. If you cannot do it, as an as end customer, generally we also don't do it for our batteries over here. Like we charge it for because that is a requirement. It's okay. You do that, but then you use your slow charging more often than your fast charging. And we recommend that. That if you are continuously charging your batteries through the fast charger, at least once in a week you have to do the slow charge. 
so that your you know life cycle will also get enhanced and your cell balancing will be better in that particular aspect. Why the manufacturers and government are not focusing on promoting the hybrid vehicles? Because EV is not right. So why they are not doing it very correctly? I feel like that uh, hybrid vehicles. See, uh, hybrid vehicles means you are having an IC engine and you are having the batteries, right? Just imagine the cost. People are already finding EVs as expensive. Right. Cost of the electric vehicle is less than EV, right? It cannot. Suppose energy generation is costing around twenty two lakhs. Okay, right now the grand. Because that is not yeah, yeah. hybrid. Sir. Yeah, not not hybrid. This is not complete hybrid. See, complete hybrid. I am talking about strong hybrid because the Japan is having the master in this hybrid. Okay. See, basically, if I simply see, like see, in hybrids, if you uh, talk about complete hybrids, you have PS and that one, the equivalent of PS and that one. So basically, they have full-fledged IC engine, they have full-fledged EVs. That is what uh, no the actual hybrid is. Do as in micro hybrid, mild hybrid, they are just. I am talking about from hybrid. Recent example is the Honda has launched the EC and CP. Okay, CP is the strong hybrid. The cost is around 19 lakhs. Okay, suppose we compare with the any EV. Okay, so maybe take the example of Angus and the CP that cost around 22 lakhs. So cost is here. Okay, so the government is not focusing on the hybrid technology. The stop gap. What I am saying, stop gap. So, uh, do you know what is the range you got in that one time when you are charging? No, no I just uh, started uh, charging technology, so there is it's not a plug in hybrid. Okay. Okay. It's a series, either series or parallel hybrid type. Okay, but how does the charging happen? Is it through uh, IC? Is, is it through IC? Yeah. IC so, so, and it runs at the optimum RPM. Okay, and so when then, uh, the, it charges the battery, okay, or suppose in the traffic conditions, we, we, we can drive deeper on the EV mode on so, we can get the so, so that is something like what we call it is to increase the efficiency of the IC. We don't, in our words, we don't call it as proper and why? Because ultimately, if we say uh, if, when they are marketing that car, then they will say that we are getting the mileage of say uh, 15 or 16 with the IC as compared to what we are getting 10 or 15 with the original car. So that is how they are marketing. What government perspective is, we have to go to clean energy. That is the first thing. Hybrids are not the solution for the clean energy. What hybrids are basically doing is it's just increasing your range uh, with respect to the traditional counterparts. And just imagine, again, as I said, that I myself will not consider that to be a proper hybrid as Prius is. Prius is you can completely switch to uh, EVs or you can completely switch to that. That is a completely different thing. Here, basically, it's just to increase the mileage of this particular IC engine that people are utilizing the battery. Again, uh, here we are not going green, we are not going green, we are polluting. Charlie, both the things. Why is it fire based compared to the actual power base? It is, but now again you see, so uh, if you see uh, why government is not providing, uh, as of now in non conventional technology, they have one policy of FAME 2. FAME 2 is, uh, it's, it's like to go green, completely green, like right? whatever, uh, whatever. Hybrid or semi hybrids or everything, they are going to decide. First of all, it is not solving that purpose. And another thing, what you are saying 19 lakhs, 20 lakhs, even uh, that, if you see the overall cost of, I don't know, but I can uh, definitely show you the total cost of ownership of uh, ZSEV. Yeah. This definitely uh, will prove to be costly in the long term, that I'm very much sure. No, no. Basically, towards having, we can say the master in the hybrid systems, and they have. One of the best hybrid system in the world, yes. and they are using this hybrid system in the vehicle uh, even since last 20 or 30 years. Okay, but still in India, we are not focusing on promoting the hybrid even, system. Uh, if you talk about Doeka, uh, you know, uh, because I am in this industry now, they are uh, the focus on the hybrid is very low. As of when the new technologies, what we will be seeing, they are focusing mostly on the full cell hybrids. Because when you, even if you compare the cost of ownership with respect to the EVs, with respect to the fuel cells, it is still coming very high. First, it is not solving the, uh, uh, this uh, purpose of going green, or it will be higher maintenance. So, because of these reasons, even the government is not focusing on They don't want, uh, see, if we can go from BF4 to BF6, we can directly go from conventional to electric. 
That is my boundless perception. I'm talking. I'm talking. Okay. So uh, maybe I'm looking for the range also. Then if you are going full. Right. Because maximum value is fifteen or something like that. Four hundred maximum max. Okay. So I just arm here and focus on the value. Okay. And meanwhile, suppose the EV uh, technology becomes the mature one. Okay. Or maybe I think the is going on the battery. Okay. Then after one decade or eight or ten years, uh, we can switch to the. So that was an interesting survey, you know, that we carried out. Uh, of the user pattern of how many kilometers which which has been driven by uh, by a person daily so normal person how much kilometers does he drive per day what do you think okay. i'll come to that point also but uh, as a general perspective consider the average population and what is the average drive per day please take it okay sorry per day per day Or every time we find just Suppose just again, we can read them what to do. Just uh, I'll come to that point also. So, say fifty kilometers, sixty kilometers, hundred kilometers, two hundred kilometers a day, not more than that. Right. So, in that particular uh, vehicle, uh, so you can say that for as far as city drive is concerned, electric vehicles are the best suited. That you agree, because no one will drive more than four hundred kilometers a day. Do you agree with that point? In cities, I'm talking only about cities. So I I discuss about off station. I'm I'll, I'll discuss about off station drive. I'm just concerned about the cities now because most of the concern about is in the cities. So no one will drive more than 400 kilometers in a city a day. Not more than 100 kilometers in a city. That is correct. That is correct. Right. And uh, now let us talk about the off station drives. Like suppose I want to go from practical example. Many people are going from here to Bombay, four hundred kilometers. Even they don't want to deplete the complete range of five hundred kilometers, so they require some halt over. So what government is saying that instead of that, I am providing you the fast charger. Right, you you go there, you charge your vehicle in ten to fifteen minutes, and then then you go. I manage to refuel. Now the technologies are promising us uh, 10 minutes of charging station. Why do you want to go for this? Sir, we mentioned how many charging stations are there? Just this is this is again this is like a, I can say chicken and egg problem. That will increase. That will increase, and it has been promised by the government. So let us have faith in that. There is one more increase from our side. Yes, sir. There are competitions uh, run through four students, like okay. So, if uh, you wanted to give certain problems for students to try, definitely, many problems. So you can narrate those things. Okay. So, uh, you want uh, the problems which industries are facing and how uh, students can overcome it, something like that. Okay. So basically, you see. Uh, So you want in a particular segment or anything? I think this will be a good area. Exactly, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Okay. So we can give a couple of problems and be a mentor to that people in the industry part. So that will be a good thing for students to have. So Sujla is going to organize a Sujla level hackathon, and then it will. So the S P O and S P O also. So these problems can be tracked all across the. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So uh, mentorship, maybe I have to concern my HR, but uh, okay. some of the problems which I you can look at. So is there any group who is working on EV? No, so we send you an email, and on that you can. Uh, so uh, what like basically, if there is any existing project which is going on and we want to improvise it, that will be good. Rather than you know, it's all from the scratch. So is there already ongoing programs? Is there any ongoing projects which we have? Yeah, and we, we have, have to. We have some problems because the hackathon is going to place in first in Europe. So they want certain uh, aspects which can students take as a project and solve it. That's what. So uh, see, it's like uh, you want to start from the scratch, right? So basically, what I feel is during the academic year, people generally don't focus on the end market. It's more on you know just a concept level. But what happens to the end market that people fail to go for that, and that is the reason most of it still remains on the academic level. It doesn't come into industry. 
So what actually I want you know uh, the students to understand is the requirement of the market, the requirement of end consumer. You are going to buy that particular car. Are you going to buy that car if my battery is giving me the twenty percent battery? So building an EV is not a big task. Is it is not a big task? I will say that. But if my if my EV if my battery is giving me twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent of every engine, is it of actually use? So I would say better you go for AC engine. It's giving me thirty five percent efficiency. Right. So understand that uh, you know understanding the requirements of the end user is the most important thing. And based on this, you can drain down. So now, as you are saying, like uh, when as an end customer, what is what is important is range anxiety. As I already mentioned, right? If I am having four hundred kilometers of charge. If I'm having a 400 kilometers of charge, I'll not wait for 400 kilometers to completely get depleted, right? I'll I'll charge after some time. So what is what is the alternate solution to that? So this is one of the problems which the students can take. So is it is it like uh, they can work on the charging stations also? They can uh, work on our on onboard chargers also. They can work on our power packs also. They can work on the grids also. So there are that is how you know you can explore the opportunity. So one of the good things which is. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, my question is very simple. So, what is the thermal dynamic temperature of the generator? So, uh, I may not be able to share you in this forum, even though I know it. Uh, but don't worry, because you will never reach there. And why? What is the reason? We have uh, and uh, because you have the liquid cooling technology. Okay. So, liquid cooling technology will never allow you to reach that particular temperature. and we have a uh, and how i'll justify myself is we have a very uh, hardcore bms right you know bms we have seen battery management system right this will cut down your uh, supply the moment it reaches a particular temperature so thermal run away chances all the other chances will be increased meaning that operating temperature will reach particular temperature and actually react very efficiently Yes, yes so about certain temperature as i said like in that range the mm. one particular temperature is performed very excellent so we can identify that type of things or so yes we can do trial and error so generally if the temperature is between you know 24 to 25 to 35 degree it depends upon but yes generally so uh, just uh, going means just looking at the broad perspective you can operate at 25 to 35 So sorry uh, can you uh and to do tankers uh of carbon particle to tankers you will say we can we replace the EVs and if we uh, if we look back the effects of the transition from the industrial into the even in the answer from PFD also give us some uh, statistic about the use and in the agri hydrogen how it can be developed if you guys back Yeah, has launched uh, some uh, hydrogen production in Gujarat and uh, that uh, transport. What will be the stand of EV after two decades? Because EV requires much time right now. The EV is getting after that approximately twenty years. Then it's it's based towards the focus on the EVs. and if we replace it with the fuel cells so what is the use because even if the fuel cells are going to come it definitely will require some storage you agree sir so completely i think the master is here i'm <laughs> just uh, what i understand is you know you will be still requiring a storage for that so batteries will still be there and uh, even if you are going to power it through the fuel cell at least for the foreseeable future We don't know what's going to be after that, but at least for the foreseeable future, battery technologies are going to be you know, used, no matter which technologies are going to be. Yes. Sir, what about 
So again, see there are different companies we are uh, researching. So that's what I'm saying. That so battery is now I cannot say that uh, this is this is a mature technology. Every OEMs are trying and researching on different things. Right, and every OEMs are having a different perspective. Right. So earlier Tesla was uh, more focused on more focused on NMC. Some other were most focused on NMC. So as I said, it's all about the trade off that you select. We have every uh, we have the specifications. It's about new. It's about the OEM which trade off we select. I can say. Uh, so how it goes, like Few companies uh, they have a slight of uh, slightly reserved capacity in the battery. So, like after a couple of years, when the battery health decreases, the reserve cells are also uh, turned on, so the uh, range for the consumer remains the same. So, the battery uh, capacity in kilowatt hours it is the uh, rating with the reserve or without. Uh, I think no company does that, and no company should do it. First of all, uh, see, it is never advisable to uh, discharge the battery <coughs> to uh, fifty zero percent. Even if, that. even if, uh, I understand. I understand what you are saying. Is uh, there are there is certain capacity which is always left over, and uh, once this started getting depleted, the the battery capacity will come. That's what you are saying. No, no. Like, uh, the say ten to twenty percent of the battery is uh, like turned off for a couple of years. And when the battery health decreases, when the efficiency, so like previously it was giving 200 kilometers, then it is giving 200 kilometers. Mm -hmm. At that time, the cells are uh, added back, so like the range would again reach to 250. So huh, that is possible. That's what I was saying. Right. No, so suppose like after certain kilometers, if the particular cells are getting depleted, it is possible to take out those yes. modules, not cells, but at least modules we can take out and replace it. And again, your batteries will be. Second, I wanted to ask like uh, the performance by uh, uh, like greater acceleration or cooling capacity, mm -hmm. the range that reduces to half or one third. So, like what can be done in that case? Mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, so, uh, loading requirement is not uh, so, so, so like uh, for that also like the battery capacity has changed. Because I saw a, a comparison video. So, uh, the I see in cars were going like 20 to 30 kilometers in a gallon, and the uh, Tesla Model 3 they had compared to like it went only 20 to 30 kilometers in a full charge at full excellence. So, again, see, uh, you cannot, uh, this is not an apple to apple comparison. Yeah. Right. So, again, if you are uh, selecting a battery for load carrier application, you have to select the batteries accordingly. If you are select, selecting it for personal application, you have to select accordingly. No, so that's what I am asking. So, for acceleration requirements, which type of battery you have to use, and uh, will there always be a drawback of the less range for acceleration? See, acceleration does not only depend on a battery. Battery is what? It is just a storage medium, right? So, it again depends on your motor, your inverter, how it is, how it is responding. What is battery? If I compare battery, it's just the fuel of your vehicle. Right? Fuel of your vehicle does not always determine the acceleration. Right. So again, we need to understand that dynamics. So, uh, is there any possibility of some of the batteries that you have seen that have chemistry, some different types of space together? Space so we can power, combine and some of having a specific energy. Uh, if you putting some additives, and there are there are things with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, we can say the base metal plus certain additives in order to increase that particular uh, criteria. So that is it. Why OEMs are launching electric cookers now? Which market is not mature? It is mature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why the EVs are not appearing? We are talking about cars or cars. Uh, actually, I don't have the graph. If I would uh, show you the graph from uh, about the complete EV, like you know, from 2010 to 2020, you will see a substantial increase in the EVs. So it is definitely being accepted. Specifically, when you go to the regions of NCR, you go to Delhi, uh, you go to Delhi, complete NCR, you go to Bangalore, you go to Mumbai. Definitely, it is being accepted. Maybe here it will take some time because there it is a need of the art. So yeah, that you'll be able to see. It. But yes, these are being accepted, and there is a substantial. Okay, so, 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 so,
लिथियम लिथियम पॉलीमर बैटरी इज बेसिकली कैन यूज दैट लाइक इन एल एफ पी वॉट यू आर सेम सो वी हैव दैट लिथियम पॉलीमर बैटरी इज इट इट्स गुड ऑन सेफ्टी वेस्ट एनर्जी 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 